Hello and welcome to the Marriage Circle Connection. I am Dr. Kendra Holmes, and this is my co-host, my sweet, loving husband. This is Dr. Michael Holmes, and as always, we are so delighted to have you to join us as we come into your homes, as we come into your cars, however you're actually watching us on today to really talk about the wonderful things that God is doing by way of and through marriage. And we have some awesome guests who are with us on today and we can't wait to share them with you because we're going to be talking about a topic that you might not hear a whole lot about when you hear people talk about marriage. So we're going to be going into that topic, delving into it and really sharing from our hearts and from the heart of God what it is that we want to talk about on today. I'm excited. What about you, babe? I'm very excited. Uh, this is a subject that I've been doing a real in-depth study on. I believe it is something that plagues the, the people of God that are in marriages, uh, sometimes very unaware of the symptoms and the triggers and the things that bring these type of situations across. And so we felt compelled in our heart that we wanted to be able to reach out to you and get some information to you that would bring some insight uh, based off of some hindsight of things that we've seen yeah. in the past yeah. that will that will affect your future. And so we want you to have the marriage that is custom designed and tailor made that God has for you. And so on today's show, we will have some information that I believe will be very beneficial to your lives. Amen. 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 In our show on today, we have our guests, our pastors that have traveled to come and be a part of this to share this because this is something that's really dear and personal, even with the two of them. And we're going to be talking about trauma under the covenant. And so that's our, the topic of what we'll be speaking on today. And we have pastors Michael and Gloria Fight, who have come here from all nations worship ministries outside of Kentucky. And they're going to be just really sharing with us how God has worked even in their marriage in the midst of this. So tell us just a little bit about yourself and then, and then tell us how this whole issue of, of trauma and panic disorder, things like that have actually come into this marriage? Well, of course, my name is Gloria Fight. Mm -hmm. uh, they typically call me Pastor Gloria. Yes. I met my husband when he came to Columbus, Mississippi mm -hmm. by way of the Army. Okay. I was newly divorced mm -hmm. when he came, and I had gone through just a whirlwind of things, but yet on the outside, mm. I knew how to praise God. Yes, yes. And no one in the church knew mm -hmm. what I was dealing with on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, when the Lord brought this good looking man mm -hmm. to Columbus, Come Mississippi, on now. Right, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it was on and popping. <laughs> 20, 20, almost 21 years later, was well, actually 21 years later, uh, we stand together yet and still on the things that God, only God could do what he did when oh, he yes. brought a mother of three mm -hmm. to a father mm -hmm. of three. Yes. And God called us family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we both had our own issues. And I'm going to let him speak for a moment. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get back into the things. That thing that, that shouting sister that you see in church. And she looks like she's got it going on. She mm -hmm. looks from the outside. Come on. That she's victorious in every area of her life. Yes. But if you dove on the backside. Mm. You go past the shout, you go past the dress, you go past the smile and the makeup. Mm. There was a woman yes. that had a problem. Oh, yes, yes. And God sent just the right man Amen. to love me right on out of that problem. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. amen. and as my wife uh, said, uh, both of us were, had went through divorces. Mm -hmm. And as you go through a divorce, there are certain things that are hidden oh, yeah. in everything. Uh, but God is so awesome. You know, uh, when I came back to the United States, uh, my last thing that I wanted to do was to get married because at that time, all I wanted was more of God. Mm -hmm. uh, but I told God that God had to tell me himself mm -hmm. who this person was. Amen. And he actually did this. He told me, he told me in, in my quarters, you know, I asked him, who was this woman? I didn't even know her name. Mm -hmm. uh, and then God just told me uh, that uh, she was my wife. And and I asked God, I said, well, do, do she know? Mm -hmm. And God said, yes, she know. I said, well, God, can I call her mm -hmm. and ask her? Well, my pastor told me what her name was, so I knew how to find her name in the phone book. And I called her up on the phone, and I said, ma'am, this is Brother
the fight. Can you please uh, take a seat? And she was like, sir, I'm sitting down. Mm -hmm. I said, the Lord told me that you was my wife and wow. that you knew. So do you know? <laughs> and she said, yes, sir, I know. I said, okay, ma'am, thank you. You have a good night. <laughs> Now, 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 why I said that is because I only asked God, could I ask her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that one question? Right. And I, I had been married before almost 17 years, and uh, I didn't know how to even keep a conversation. So uh, I didn't want to blow anything. And if God said that it's for you, mm -hmm. and then I believed him in his word yes. and what he said. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. You know what? I, I love speaking with other couples and particularly kingdom couples yes. and hearing the backstory mm -hmm. of your marriage and how you came together because they're so it's, it's so vastly different but the one common thing is that you know the voice of God you know and you it. know when God has actually led you to one another you know and so I think that that's so important for us to know for people to know in general is that they need to follow the voice of God. In order for us to follow God's voice, we gotta know when we hear, hear it, it. Yeah. you know, because a lot of voices will actually be in our ear and we can get confused and find ourselves in a predicament where we don't need to be, but it's so, so important. And it's, it's important because although, you know, as, as individuals, adults who wanna get married, you know, you, you are attracted to a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And so what we see in front of our eyes initially mm -hmm. would be the thing that will attract us, but God knows down the road. So he knows what we need. He knows the things that we're actually going to come in contact with as a part of that marriage journey. So let, let's talk about, you know, getting, you know, together and knowing that God really pulled you together. Let's talk about things that have happened throughout this journey, this 21 years, yes. that you uh, have now been together as one. And we love to talk about that as one here because mm -hmm. the scripture says, and the two shall become one, one. Yeah. one flesh. And so we talk about that oneness and how important that really is to the success and the survival of marriage. So let's, let's talk about the journey itself. Well, you know, when we got married, of course, I knew how to be the part. Mm -hmm. I, my first marriage, right there in the church 17 years in the church mm -hmm. and so I knew how to do the part I knew how to be the wife I knew how to keep the outer self looking as if everything was well yes. so when I married this wonderful God sent man never had a God sent man right and even in through his love and how loving how kind he started trying to he was almost as if he was pulling me out of that cocoon mm -hmm. that he couldn't see mm -hmm. and he would just he wouldn't he didn't say anything that was you know he never said it seems like there's been trauma in your life I know you came out of a bad marriage mm -hmm. he never said anything pertaining to that and one day we had probably been married about 12 13 years mm -hmm. I was traveling down interstate 65 headed to the mall headed to dealers to a sale and for whatever reason doing that drive my mind shifted back to when I was seven Wow. And as a seven year old being molested mm -hmm. and I was driving down the highway, myself and a girlfriend, I should say I was riding because mm -hmm. I'm not the driver. I'm always a rider. <laughs> okay. I don't like driving. Let's say that. <laughs> and she thought, you know, are you OK? Are you sick? You hurting? And I was seeing the act take place going down the highway. Wow. And at this time, I'm in my 40s, mm -hmm. almost my 50s by then. Mm -hmm. And I could hear my grandmother chastise me. My grandmother spanked me for telling her that her friend had molested me. Wow. And so that began a chain of events in my life that not only from a family member, then it went from family member to um, one of my relatives their spouse mm. physically raped me when I was 12 wow. and so all of these things have been shut and shoved and pushed until that day mm -hmm. and when we got to the mall we sat in the car we prayed I never ever told my husband that never wow. ever told him never ever told anyone in the church been ministering to women been ministering to hurting women and I myself was wounded mm -hmm. and so that particular Sunday, we got back up. I already talked with my husband about it. We prayed. And that particular Sunday, God said, tell them your real story. Wow. I said, God, you want me to tell? Wow. In front of all these here folks looking at me right now. Mm -hmm. 
God said, tell them. Yes. The same deliverance you got, they need. Wow. So that Sunday morning, God took me and he just bore my whole soul. I had to share how I felt from the ones who were supposed to protect me. Those were the ones who beat me. Wow. And so yeah. they, beat it, they beat quietness into me. Yes. yes. I could talk, 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 but you would never hear my heart because I wouldn't allow it to be shown. That's why I was showing you earlier with these pretty shoes. Uh-huh. Pretty on the outside. That's right. But you don't know the pain that they can carry. Right. And so in that, it taught me we had men, women, young, old, flood the altar that day. Mm -hmm. And then God began to take me over. Take, he took me down into parts of Tennessee. Share your story. He took me into Alabama. Share your story. Wow. And I began to just share with women the things that I had kept from even my most intimate friends. My best friend never knew. And I never told no one. Mm -hmm. I didn't even talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. But when I look back at it now, I can see all the times that my husband, if I thought that I was displeasing him, mm -hmm. or if I thought that he was acting a certain, he was different than he was that morning, mm -hmm. then I would retreat because my goal in life was not only to please God, I wanted to please this man of God. Yes. And, and I thought, well, now, if I didn't really tell this brother what I've been through, mm -hmm. I don't know if he can handle that. And you know what? We want to we want to pause it right there because we want to hear how you handled that. And we want to hear how God provided healing mm -hmm. in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of because there are so many. And I know this is going to bless somebody. There are so many people yes. hurting on the inside, but putting on the mask on the outside. And they've got to know that they have to be transparent in order for yes. God to really heal them. Yes. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about really about this trauma that so many people, even people of God, even people of faith are holding on the inside in their need for perfection in their need to try and put on a front of just having this perfect Christian life and there's so much going on on the inside that is left open and unhealed that needs to come out because God can't bless other people until we're willing to share the testimony and so we're going to come back and find out how the fights dealt with this once it became open and how as a husband you were able to deal with that and help her to walk through the healing process. So don't you go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Marriage Circle Connection. If you enjoy the programming seen here today, consider becoming a sponsor. By supporting Queen Esther Mega Networks, you're helping to spread the promise of redemption and salvation in Middle Georgia and beyond. Your support is vital and appreciated, so please contact us today. Welcome back to the Marriage Circle Connection. We just left you on a short break just a few minutes ago, and we were on a subject dealing with trauma from Pastor Gloria Fight. I want to talk to the husband and ask from his perspective, how did he handle and how did he deal with the effects of the trauma in his wife, and how did he assist her in navigating her way out of that place? Amen. Yes, sir. To answer your question, the first thing I'm, I must realize is that, number one, that God placed us together. Number one to know number two to know that I was the husband that was supposed to be for her So I know the characteristics of God is that he's a provider. He's a deliverer He's a protector yeah. and everything and one thing and and most of all he he loves us mm -hmm. So one thing that I had to do for my wife is to not only provide protection for her But let love cover her yes, because yes, I know that yes. love will bring back or de de defeat anything that the enemy wanted to destroy her with Right. is that love right. love for your spouse love yeah. for the ones that are in your life mm -hmm. amen and get over anything else that might have thoughts or anything to put them back somewhere so that they'll be defeated and just know what my purpose is uh, because I believe that everything that she needs that I got it oh yes right. oh yes right. talk about amen. it baby. you know and everything right. that I need that she has it and I got right. it. so uh, it will be uh, dishonorable for me 
just to say, oh, I'm through with this or mm -hmm. to walk out. Mm -hmm. But to be there, even not just when the times are good, mm -hmm. but when the times are hard. And if she's going through something, guess what? Because we are one. That's right. That means that I am going through that's something right. with her. Amen. Right. Amen. She's not alone. Amen. So to never let her feel alone. Amen. You know, that, that puts me in the mind of our Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, Christ said he gave his life for us yet while we were in sin. Yes, right. sir. He didn't wait till we make the conscious decision to love him. He said, I loved you before yes. the foundation of the world. He made a decision in glory that the son would be slain before the foundation of the world in order to reconcile us back to himself. Mm -hmm. And so he uses an example as the, as the husband being like Christ and the woman being like the church. Mm -hmm. And so we need to exemplify that in our marriage to our spouses for the world to see because we see so much negativity in the world. We see people frowning on marriage. They'd rather live together than to enter into the covenant of marriage. So we want to take people through this journey to let them understand that after you say I do, mm -hmm. that there's a there's a journey that you have to go. Oh, yeah. and, and, and in order for the two to become one, uh, we have to allow the word of God to be our foundation. Amen. Yeah. Because if we if we try to do things based off of our own limited understanding, the Bible tells us that we are to lean not to our own understanding, right. but in all of our ways acknowledge him mm -hmm. and he will and he shall direct our path. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Gloria Fight, give us a little bit more insight into that journey, because one of the things that I learned uh, as I delve into trauma that I learned is that the brain does not know how to differentiate between trauma, trauma that you suffered as a child and trauma that you suffer as an adult. All the mind knows how to do. There's four areas that I learned. It's either fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Can you give elaborate on that a little bit for us? Yes, sir. Um, once you've been, especially, it's one of those things where as when you see other people, you know how you can look at somebody and say, oh, I, I know them I, mm -hmm. because I know that look. Mm -hmm. That used to be me. I just, I, I look back now and I see all of the time how those triggers would come up. Mm -hmm. And so then this man mm -hmm. who God sent mm -hmm. into my life and he loved me right out my mess. Mm -hmm. He loved me right. He went into an area of me and my mind. And hear me when I say this. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about hips and slips. Mm -hmm. come on. I'm talking about going down in the inside. Yes. Yeah the quarters of your heart. And he loved me past that. He loved me past, I had never been loved. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I understood the love of God, mm -hmm. but he taught me his love yes. through a man's love. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he wouldn't even know the days that I needed reinforcement. Those were the days that he would say, baby, you should have looked good today. Mm. You don't have a clue mm -hmm. about this day. Mm -hmm. But he would just, always encouraging always gently pushing me gently pushing me never one time said sweetie your testimony kind of is kind of embarrassing mm -hmm. uh, he would say no you you tell it till you get tired of telling yes, it yes. and then you tell it some more because people need to hear it because mm -hmm. there's somebody hurting mm -hmm. right there right then mm -hmm. and so i ran into a couple of ladies i met one lady who she was sick in her late 60s and she said to me, she said, I thought I would have to die with my secret. Mm -hmm. And she and I prayed. And we, by the end of the service, you could see a glow over that woman. And she said, I've been waiting all these years for just somebody mm -hmm. to walk into these church doors mm -hmm. and just tell me all about myself. Yes, yes. And I said, well, God has it at God's appointed time. Right, right. You know, the word of God tells me that we are to comfort those wherewith we ourselves have yeah, been comforted by God. Right. Amen. Sometimes we run from the situations that we've been in. I remember one time standing in the foyer of a church and I asked this deacon this particular question. I said, man, what is it about God that he's allowing, he's showing me my past, my present, mm -hmm. and my future simultaneously at the same time? And what the words he said to me, it shook me. He said, God is revealing the alpha and the omega of himself. Yes. He said, God is allowing you to see where you've come from, where you are and where you're going. Because just like with Moses, when he fled into the uh, desert from Egypt, that same terrain was the same area that he, at, at a later date, he would leave the children of Israel out of bondage. Yes. So God says some things in our past were not meant to destroy us, but they were meant to strengthen us. Because the Bible says yes. that when the children of Israel came out, 
they came out with great substance. So there's some substance in us. Uh, it's almost it almost puts me in the mind of the woman with the issue of blood that when she touched the hem of his mm -hmm. garment, Jesus yeah. said, "I felt virtue." Mm -hmm come out of me so when we tell our testimony i believe it is the virtue of god reaching out and touching those that have been hurt those that have been broken those that are crying and silent and need to have answers yes, yes, to those yes. situations yes. Yeah. amen amen you know I, I love hearing you all share the story because you're coming from not only someone who actually dealt with this and have this in your life that you dealt with that resurfaced mm -hmm. as an adult but we're talking about pastors yes we're talking about people oh, yes. who lead a congregation and yes. people who are looking up to you they get their uh encouragement yes from you they they are led to christ you know by you and oftentimes they don't really realize the things that you have had to go through right to get to the place where god has actually brought you and just briefly either one of you it did, did, how did this affect your church or did it affect your church negatively, positively? However, after this actually really came out and you shared your testimony and with you standing beside her and helping her through this, how did the, how did you all well, carry initially, through this? Well, uh, initially, and he may have seen it from, a, they may have shared with him a little differently than mm -hmm. they did myself. Mm -hmm. However, for me, it, it gave way for sons and daughters to become, to actually be sons and daughters right i had sons that felt comfortable enough to be able to say mom just pray with me mm -hmm. because they was that was the little boy mm -hmm. that said i need help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i had grown men who had gone through things and and they just said mom i just need i because i went from at that moment being their pastor being able to assist them to now i'm their spiritual mother, mother. helping right. them walk through the ways and the the different occurrences of life to say, hey, you can come past this, mm -hmm. though it may not have been dealt with. And so much so that one of them and what I tell them often is the same story I have to tell myself daily when I'm dealing with things that I because I, I had some things I needed to forgive. The, the gentleman who molested me at seven, he's dead and gone. I mean, mm -hmm. there, I couldn't go to him and say, hey, what you do this to me for? Right, he's gone. Right. So I had to just stand up and say, I forgive him. Mm -hmm. And same as well as um, the man that raped me. I had to say, I forgive him. Mm -hmm. And so when we became face to face at, a, at my cousin's funeral services, I said to my husband, you know, hey, that's the person. Mm -hmm. and, you know, my husband was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I had to mm -hmm. say, wait, wait, hold it, baby. <laughs> we have forgiven him. Mm -hmm. He's part of our past. Mm -hmm. We're standing in our present right. and we're pushing to our future. Right. So he's not going to come in and mess with none of that. That's right. I said, so, you know, he didn't really know what to do with us. Mm -hmm. But God has allowed that the opening in the us just having to pull back the layers and expose the most painful parts of us, it has caused for me, I haven't seen where it's been a negative influence right. for me. Right. I've seen it to be a plus where I've had people to call me at the midnight hour mm. and say, hey, I got my friend, want to give you a my friend, friend. And sometimes the friend, friend was them. Mm -hmm. You know? Of course, yeah. Uh, but I've seen how God has used it. It has such, been such a blessing in my life yes. um, to be free. Yes. So I'm neither embarrassed mm -hmm. nor ashamed. That's right. But God has empowered me. Yes. yes. So when I stand and I walk in, I walk into a room with power. Mm -hmm. The power of the Holy Ghost come in and precedes me. That's right. So therefore, when I begin to tell my story, that woman, that man sitting on that back row, they need, have no need to be ashamed. Yes. Because God will give you the power that you need to stand upright mm -hmm. and no longer look down, but look up. Mm -hmm. Because our best days oh, yes. are just ahead of us. Yes, yes. You know, as you, were, as you were talking about that, I remember one time I was in a service in Beach Island, South Carolina. Uh, we went down to support our pastor at that time. Mm -hmm. And out of the blue, it was about 45 of us, she called my name. She called all her biological children up to the podium. And then out of the blue, she called my name. And when I went up, she said, come up, son, because I want you to walk mm -hmm. in and receive this anointing. So as we were traveling back on the bus, everybody was patting me on the back. Oh, man, she, she called your name. She, she, she touched you with her anointing and all this. And the whole time in my mind, I'm asking the Lord, now what I got to go through 
to receive what I just <laughs> got laid. Because I know it's more to it than you laying your hands on me. And when you were just talking about the, the anointing, we want the anointing to just be something that somebody can just come lay hands on us and we receive. The anointing doesn't come like that. The anointing costs you something. Oh, yes, and yes, that's what yes, gives yes, you yes, the yes. power to release yes. other people and give them the freedom. Uh, Pastor Fight, give us a little inkling into that information and how that carried over into your life and how, uh, as uh, Dr. Kendall was saying, how did you deal with that, the repercussions of when she came out? Uh, when she came out, there was really no repercussion. And I can truly say in my mindset is because of the foundation that was already made. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is, um, number one, uh, to marry the person that God has for you, yes, yes. knowing that you have everything that they need, because mm -hmm. there were men that came up to me, well, pastor, how do you, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. But to give them the confidence is that God called them to be whatever she needed them to be for her. And, and also, and also, uh, with that, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the women that are not married would come up and everything, and they would ask me, okay, God, uh, 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 Pastor, how, how, do, how do I wait for God? Mm -hmm. You know, the number one, to instill in them, you have to patiently wait on God. You yes, cannot yes. Uh, uh, be someone to rush into something because you'll be rushing into something that God did not call you into, mm. uh, where you'll find on, out you'll on. be getting out of it quicker than it was that you got into it. Yes. Amen. And then it opened up another aspect. Now, some people might not agree. Amen. But you can tell uh, by the men that will come forward just mm -hmm. to talk to my wife. Amen. I, I saw then I identified the ones that were only used to talking with their mother mm -hmm. and everything and stuff because she could talk to them just like a mother. Amen. Not for me to get angry. Amen. But to understand where they were coming from. Yeah. How can I understand that? Because I grew up the same way. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know so you understand and identify. Right. That's that's amazing because God has a way of bringing people in our path or bringing us into the path of people who can minister to us or who we can minister to. And we can minister to them, not just because of something somebody told us, but something that we have actually been through and exactly. we can give them that experience. It's just been a wonderful blessing to have the two of you, Thank you. to be on the show and to share this because there's something about being transparent and yes. really sharing what God has done in your life that blesses people beyond measure. Yes. So it is our joy and pleasure to have had you to share this stage with us and to share this moment with us and help us to really talk to those on the outside who really, for the most part, need to hear what it is that you have actually shared on today. And we truly hope that this show has been a blessing to somebody out there. We want to hear from you. I know that our information is showing on the screen. We want to hear from you as, as to how this show has blessed you. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear your feedback so that when we come before you, we know that God is using us to do something wonderful and to do something magnificent in your life and in the lives of your relationships. So thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the Marriage Circle Connection. And always remember that the two, the two shall, shall become, become one, one flesh. Are you looking for a way to expand your ministry's reach and draw new members to your congregation? Queen Esther Mega Networks is your partner for Christian media outreach. Contact Dr. Janet Hogan Lamar today to learn how you can become a guest on one of our current programs or start your own worship and ministry series through Queen Esther Mega Networks.